So you're planning a trip to Mauritius and don't quite know where to start. Well, you've come to the right place. I've just come back to India after spending a week in Mauritius. And in this video, I'll share all my secrets about traveling there, about flights, about visa, about hotels, about food, about SIM cards, drones, and everything else. So stay tuned and I'm sure you'll love this video. <laughs> Hi, my name is Siddharth and I'm a travel blogger, vlogger, photographer and a content creator on travel. If you are new here, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel for more travel videos like this and to help you plan your travels in India as well as outside India. Let's get started with this video. Let's start with the most obvious question that's on everybody's mind when we're planning a trip to India or outside India. COVID protocols. So for Mauritius, it's really good news. You don't need to do a COVID test before you go, though I would strongly recommend you do it so that you're sure you're not positive when you start your journey. Once you are in Mauritius, you need to do a rapid antigen test in your hotel within 24 hours. And once you get a negative result, you can travel around everywhere in the country. The country still follows some COVID protocols like wearing a mask, so you need to follow those as well. But otherwise, the country is completely open and you can go pretty much everywhere. The other question that I get asked very often is how many days should you plan for for Mauritius? I would say at least a week. It's a country far, far away from India and it takes a while to reach there. So if you're going all the way there, might as well spend at least seven days there to explore the country at a slow pace. Don't rush because there is so much to see. In one week, I could not cover everything. So I would say at least a week is good. However, if you're really short on time and you want to do a quick trip, I would say nothing less than four days. Now, visa for Mauritius. Do you need a visa? Yes, of course you need a visa for Mauritius, just like for all the other countries. But the visa is on arrival. All you need to do is fill a couple of forms, one online and one later on at the airport. And there's no visa fee. You get the visa like this very quickly, very easily. Full points on that. Once visa is done, the next step is flying to Mauritius. Right now, the flights are not back to the pre-pandemic levels. So there are only a few direct flights for Mauritius. In my opinion, the best port of exit would be Mumbai because there's still a few direct flights from Mumbai every single week to Port Louis in Mauritius. So Mumbai would be the preferred port of exit and the airline of choice would be Air Mauritius, again, because they have direct flights. I flew economy with them and I absolutely loved the experience. It's one of the best economy classes that I have flown in. Once in Mauritius, I would really recommend getting a SIM card, a local SIM card, at least with data so that you can really be connected while you're in the country as well. I would recommend downloading the Google Maps in advance so that whenever you're on the go, you can always map locations and you know don't get lost. The best place to buy your SIM cards would be at the airport itself. But if you don't buy at the airport, buy it at a shopping center or a mall. Make sure you carry your passport because that is necessary. I did not do that. And so my SIM card was a little bit delayed. 70% of Mauritians are of Indian origin. So you might think that Hindi and other Indian languages might work there, but that's not the case. The language of choice there is French followed by English. Some people might speak a little bit of Tamil or other Indian languages, but I didn't find anybody who actually spoke Hindi. So yeah, English and French work really well. Other Indian languages don't. When we visit a country, food is of course a very, very important part. And food in Mauritius is really, really good. The two countries which have had the biggest impact on food in Mauritius are France and India. But then you also get very multicultural food across the country. The food is one of the highlights of your trip here. Also, if you like alcohol, there's something very special in Mauritius, especially for rum lovers. They make some of the best rum in the world. So yeah, go try some rum tasting and maybe get some back uh, for your family as well in India. So once you reach Mauritius, how do you actually commute? How do you go to different interesting places within the country? There are three ways of doing it. Use public transport, use a taxi or self-drive. I would say that public transportation is not very well developed there. So yeah, there are buses, but uh, there are few of them and they may not take you to your final destination. So I would keep that out unless you are on a really, really budget trip. Taxis work pretty well, especially because the drivers know all the locations, all the roads really, really well. So that helps in planning your trip there. But what I would recommend is actually a self-driven car. Indian licenses work there if you go on a short-term trip. And also they drive on the same side of road as we do. So there's no confusion when you drive on the road. You can take taxi or rent a self-driven car from the airport itself 
or from the city. I have put a few links in the description of the places which do this. You can book both your taxi as well as your car before you even start your trip from India. Check out the description for more details. Now this one is for a small group of people only who love to fly drones when they travel. People like me. Now most countries in the world are getting more and more strict about drone regulation and Mauritius is no different. So you do need prior permission and drone registration before you fly your drone there. I was of course traveling with a tourism boat so it was a bit easier for me but make sure you do have all the permissions before you fly. Hotels often allow you to fly the drones but again make sure you take permission from them and they'll give you a designated time when you can fly. Flying drones in Mauritius is great but do it only with the right permission. And finally, here are my recommendations for places to stay when you are in Mauritius. These are all based on my personal experiences. If you're doing a luxury trip and especially are there on your honeymoon, I would suggest Lee Meridian. It's located right on the beach, has the most beautiful sunsets and it's a property that will pamper you to no end. It is also my favorite property in Mauritius. However, if your trip to Mauritius is for longer term, like for a few days or a few weeks or a few months, I would suggest a place called Grand Bay. Now this place actually has units which are like hotel rooms but have all the amenities within. So you have a dishwasher, you have a washing machine and many many other things in your room which you'll need for your long term stay. You can cook inside these places. So yeah, that works really well when you are going for a longer stay. Especially if you are a digital nomad and you want to work from Mauritius, this is a good option. And finally, if you are on a leisure trip without a very high budget and you still want to be close to the ocean, I would suggest Hotel Veranda Tamarind. It's a beautiful property with very earthy vibes. It has its own pool also, and you can always go to the ocean for surfing or swimming, which is right across the street from the hotel. So these are all my recommendations, suggestions, tips, and secrets for planning your trip to Mauritius. If you have more questions, leave them in the comment below, and I'll try to answer all of them. Also, if you enjoyed watching this video, do like it and leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Ciao for now.